It was an alert security guard who first took notice of something unusual. The guard, who was patrolling government-owned airport lands in rural Pickering, came upon a silver BMW parked on sideline 32, just south of Concession 7. It was just after 8 p.m. on August 2, 2010. The guard took note of the luxury automobile, which was conspicuous in a rural area known for sometimes illicit nighttime activity. The airport lands were dotted with abandoned houses that were targeted by vandals and firebugs. There were also concerns about people growing pot. The guard waited for the owner of the car to return, but after two hours no one had. He continued with his rounds, returning to the lonesome intersection at about 3.30 am to find the car was gone. Although there was no evidence of any crime or mischief, the officer filed a report about the car. It wasn't until more than a year later, after another chance discovery, that the significance of the security guard's observations became apparent. Police became involved, uncovering a strange and unsettling plot involving a broken marriage and a plan for vengeance. It would all lead to a weird court proceeding and jail time for the man at the center of it all. In November 2011, more than a year after the security guard took note of the BMW parked by a rural road, contractors were on the airport lands examining buildings that were slated for demolition. One of the buildings was 140 Concession 7, a farmhouse with an attached garage set about 100 meters off the main road. Upon entering the garage they noticed something odd, a structure resembling a workbench that had recently been painted. Behind a door, they discovered a cement staircase. There was another door at the bottom of the stairs. Upon opening that door, the men encountered a third door, about three inches thick and made of multiple sheets of plywood. It was secured by locking devices using tire irons. They opened that door, looked inside, then called Durham police. The find was a chilling, spooky scene. Bizarre to say the least. The whole room had been recently painted white, a paint tray remained in one corner. The dirt floor had been tiled. There was a roughly constructed bench, beside which hung chains that had been bolted to the ceiling and extended to the floor. There were several jugs of water. There were two double-paned windows, one of which had been broken. The walls and ceiling were insulated with double layers of fiberglass. Police considered various scenarios. Was it a movie set? Maybe it was some kind of kinky playroom. Or was someone planning to abduct a person and shut them up in it against their will? Items left in the room provided a few clues as to who may have been there, a couple of discarded soy milk containers, a World Youth Day volunteer t-shirt, and investigators found tools, each bearing distinctive red paint marks. The most promising lead for the police to follow was provided by the security guard who wrote down the license plate number of the BMW he'd seen parked in the area. That information led police to start looking into Robert Edwin White. In 2007, Patricia Gallagher had ended her marriage to White. During the turbulent time, Gallagher turned for support to her close friend, Gwen Armstrong. As the reality of the end of his marriage settled in, White developed a deep resentment toward Armstrong, whose friendship with Gallagher he regarded as a divisive factor in his marriage. Years passed, but the bitterness remained. White remarried, but still resented his limited contact with his children and the breakdown of his marriage. And he continued to stew about Armstrong. Gallagher told police her ex ran a renovation business. Yes, she told the cops, Robert marked his tools with red paint. Yes, he drank lactose-free milk. She confirmed that White had volunteered at World Youth Day in Toronto in 2002. Robert Edwin White was arrested on February 13 on a charge of break and enter with intent to commit an indictable offence. Once in custody, White admitted to having built the room, and his plan to use it. While he wouldn't say who his intended target was, he was insistent about who it wasn't, not his current wife, he told police, or his ex-wife and children. For the police, the true motivation behind the room remained a mystery. White's secret was revealed in an unlikely forum, during a bail hearing shortly after his arrest. 
The startling admission was made by White's father, Jim, as he testified in a bid to be named as his son's shorty. Jim White was being cross-examined by prosecutor Brenda Green, now an Ontario court judge sitting in Durham region, when the topic of Robert White's divorce arose. Jim White insisted that while his son had been through an exceedingly hard time, he'd never hinted at wanting to hurt anyone. But he recalled a conversation a few years earlier at the family home in Parry Sound, when he said Robert fantasized about confining someone. But who did he want to confine? It was as if an electric current had suddenly coursed through the basement courtroom. The court was adjourned at the request of the defense. Police followed up on the lead and learned from White's current wife that she, too, had heard him muse about confining Armstrong. White was soon charged with attempted kidnapping. His bail hearing was abandoned. The facts in the bizarre case finally came out on September 5, 2012, when Robert White stood in an Oshawa courtroom and pleaded guilty to break and enter with intent to commit an indictable offence. The kidnapping charge was withdrawn. It was through the court process that Gwen Armstrong learned she had been the target of White's plan. During a sentencing hearing less than a week later, she said, I'm still in shock. I don't know if I will ever get the images out of my head, I can't remember the last time I slept through the night. When Robert White was given an opportunity to address the court he launched into an address that lasted nearly 20 minutes. He expressed contrition and disappointment with himself but kept returning to a theme. He told the courtroom that he had been pushed to the brink by his family issues. He admitted his response was wrong, even grotesque. I'm not at all proud of my behavior, he said, sniffling and clutching a tissue. He then continued to proclaim that his intentions were to help his children. I really don't understand how this would make sense in any sane person's mind. His intentions were obviously a bad attempt to not be looked at as a monster. Time in custody, White said, had brought about the realization he'd been motivated by anger and a sense of entitlement. On October 4, 2012, White was sentenced to two years in jail. Oddly enough, the house in which the confinement room was built had already been raised in what police described as a suspicious fire in January of that year. Please click the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my channel. Thanks for watching and take care.